just to get his ass off of bullshit, right? So we know, we know, we, you and I know that thing, right? But the rest of the world wants to know the end of the story. So let's, let's, let's set it up about how it happened, then where you were on your travel trip, right? <laughs> and, and then the surprise you gave in court and when they, you thought they were pointing at you and something else happened. Okay? All right. Well, Doc, it was like this. I was already in federal prison, right? And uh, right. I was in Memphis, Tennessee, as a matter of fact, federal and correctional. Right. And uh, I'm getting to the end of my sentence, and all of a sudden they drop a detainer on me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so next thing I know, they ship me from federal prison to the Shelby County Jail. And uh, I'm waiting for the 20 days, hoping they don't pick me up. But Shelby, is that North Carolina? No, that's Tennessee. Okay, Shelby, all right. So here I am. I get picked up by these two organized tribe uh, officers. Yeah. Pete Campagnola and Joe Wendley was their name. What was that? The officer's name was Pete Campagnola and Joe Wendley. Thank you. Oh, Joe. Yeah, that's him. Okay. So, they bring me back, right? They charge me with an arson charge. You know? <laughs> I call my friend up the lawyer, you know, Steve Flamhead. Mm -hmm. so Steve what? Out. Steve who? Flamshare. Steve Flamshare. Flamshare. Great guy. Great guy, Rock. No oh. honor. So anyhow, they bring me up from the holding tank, and Steve's there with my mother, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, we're ready to post bail because Austin, I never Austin nobody in my life. So anyhow, the bottom line is we're going to before the judge and set a bail. Just before we do that, this prosecutor, I can't remember his name. Um, we can look it up. Yeah. He comes walking over to my mother, right? And me, he says, listen, I'm sorry to tell you this, Mr. LaFroche, but uh, we dropped the charges. The arson charges. <laughs> so I look at this guy. My mother's looking at him. He says, yes, but we're recharging him with a double homicide. Fucking bullshit. I said, are you shitting me? So now they go before the judge. Judge says, no bond, no bail. All right, so I go back to back to the prison as usual and uh, wait for the second hearing. So. Before the second hearing, my lawyer, Steve, again, she says, Pete, I'm going to talk to the prosecutor. This is crazy. All right. So he goes to the office and he starts talking to him, right? And the uh, prosecutor says, I don't give a fuck what the judge says. He's not getting out on bail. Steve says, why are you doing this? He says, because he knows a lot of shit we need him to talk. Mm -hmm. and Steve says, you can forget about that shit. So before, before you go on, I just want to say this. The reason everybody keeps coming to you and me and everybody is because the Mayo crew is the only crew that never talked in 40 fucking years. Seven, People are still, the ones that are still, seven, the ones that are still alive. Was it still alive? The other three that we, they joined when I wasn't there, every right. one of them was right. All right. All right. So, so here we go for the second bond there, right? So I go back in the courtroom, right? My mother's sitting there, Steve's sitting there, right? Prosecutor gets up with his bullshit, you know, you know, I don't, no bot. So uh, Steve's looking at me and he's looking at the prosecutor. Now him and the prosecutor were half best friends. Mm -hmm. So the judge says, okay, and he's ready to hit that habit, you know, my, and Steve stands up, he says, Your Honor, can I say something? He says, sure, Mr. Plan. what do you want to say? He says, Your Honor, and my under oath, he says, sure you are. He says, well, I was talking to so-and-so the other day. I think his name was Samuels. And he said directly, straight out, he didn't give a fuck what you said, Your Honor. My client wasn't getting out. The judge says, is that what he said? He says, yes, Your Honor. So this prosecutor looks over at Steve. And Steve shrugs his shoulders. Right? So the judge turns to the prosecutor and says, so is, did you say that? You run the oath right now. So he says, he says, don't hem and hard. Did you say it? He said, yes, Your Honor. He, <laughs> says, 
$100,000 bail. Just like that. So I'm out now. Right. So now, this double homicide was mm -hmm. John, was John Quinn and Sherry Goldman. Right. God's honest truth. And nothing to do with that. But that's very I, I know. I know. And we know why, but we'll get there. Okay. So now, I go on trial for this double homicide. And uh, they got a couple of people testified against me. As a matter of fact, one of them was that guy, Willie Kemp, that uh, was the CI with the, with the car thing. So he's up there telling him his whole story about, you know, ba 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 me and Paul Barrio, ba 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 best friends, keep going on and on and on, right? And uh, then, they get the, then they get this cop up there. His officer was named Normie Blau. And he was uh, Kemp's CI, you know? So he tells the story, you know, about how, wow. how, how, yeah, yeah. how, uh, how that Willie was lying and he got forced to say these things by these cops. They were going to try to charge him with a homicide, which he never killed. Him. Last time he tried to do something, he shot himself in the head so he wouldn't have to do it. <laughs> no, that's that guy. Yeah. You know what? So, the trial's going on and on. Bottom line is, they call it a recess. I'm waiting for the lock me up. They let me go downstairs to eat lunch with my, my mother and my girl. So I'm sitting at the table. I take a couple bites of food. I put the fork down. I walk over. I kiss my girl. I kiss my mother. I start walking away. Yeah, yeah you told me this, right? And uh, my mother goes, we go. I says, as far as I can. What yeah, because they were setting wow, you up. Wow, this is 50 years you talked about that. She says, they're not going to convict you. I looked at her. What'd you say, Ma? They're not going to convict you. I said, Ma, this is not bingo. You know, you lose, you lose, you go home, you go home. <laughs> she was talking 50 large here. She says, do you trust me? Do you love me? How are you going to tell your mother you don't love her and you don't trust? Of course, I trust of course. you. She says, I'm telling you, are not going to convict you. I says, here we go. Mm. Back upstairs. You're fine. I'm sitting there. I'm waiting. You know, I got a bit, a little nervous yet. Oh, no. Yeah, of course. So, uh, the jurors come out now, right? And I'm looking at them, but I'm looking at them and they're looking at me. And my mother smiles. I said, what the hell is she smiling about? <laughs> Your mom is a, she's so cool. She's like my mom. She goes, so they come up and he says, Judge asked you, uh, did you come to a, a verdict? She said, yes, Your Honor, we did. I said, here I go, 50 Lodge. We find the defendant not guilty. Well, holy <laughs> shit. Rock, I was so like, how can I say? Relieved. Yeah, that, I looked like I was laughing, you know what I mean? Right, I right, right. You know, I wasn't laughing. I didn't think any of this shit was funny. Right, right. I guess I've been I've been charged with shit I never did too. As I'm walking past this guy, Joe Willing, this cop, he goes, Come here. I stop. I said, What do you want? He says, I know you didn't do it. I said, You know I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. He says, But of course you're 30 grand, right? He says, I'm gonna keep doing this to you until you run out of money. And right. then you know what? Then you're gonna become a rat. I looked at him, I oh, said, fuck you. I, I doubt that very much. He said, but before I get you, I'm getting that fucking cop, Norby Blau, for lying. I said, he didn't lie. He told the truth. And I said, that's what you're pissed about. And out I walked. And that was, you know. And then they, but isn't the Wembley the guy who took a hit out on you? Huh? Isn't Wembley oh, the, the cop yeah. that took a hit out on you, right? <laughs> no, the cop that wanted to put a hit on me. He said, I took right. one out on him. Right. But you, you hit him with a car, didn't you? <laughs> no, he, he actually he actually hit me. But it was half, okay, look, let me get back here a little bit. Okay, go ahead. It's cold, it's like November, January. Anyway, so there was a night that we used to use, you know? Mm. It's cold with me. Kind of like kind of like good fellas, right? Yeah, good diner like that. You know, old fashioned diner. Mm. But outside the diner they had a pay phone that you could have a drive up to, right? Right. And, you, and make the phone call. I know, so you see this too, yeah. I, I drive up. I got my phone call, right? Talking to my girl, right? And uh, 
keep the Jeep running because it's cold, you know. And uh, all of a sudden, like a 57 Chevy, a 57 Cadillac, a black prime, two door, pulls to the curb, right? So I look over at it, think nothing of it. Driver gets out, he's got a peak coat on with jeans and a beard. So he's standing there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. So I tell him, mm-hmm. you know, I'll be up the phone in a minute. So I'm talking to my girl. And out of the corner of my eye, she creeping around, you know. I said, uh oh. <laughs> now, I don't know if this is a hit. I don't know if this, I just didn't know. Uh, a lot of crazy things going on at the time, right? Anyhow, I start to, I, as, I, as, I, as I'm watching this guy, the guy from the back of the Cadillac, it's a two door now, mind you, right? So when you get out of a two door car, you push the front seat forward, step out, correct? Right, right. So like an Eldorado? Uh, yeah, whatever two door car. You push right. the seat forward and you step out. This guy pushes the seat forward and gets out backwards. I said, uh oh. So with my foot, I push my shifter at the gear. Not okay. like a cop. <laughs> so I push my I push the shifter in the gear with my foot so they couldn't see me, right? So I got one hand on the wheel. I tell my brother, I says, listen, if you don't hear from me, it's either I'm dead or I'm being chased. Call Ma and tell her to get rid of this, the scubettas. So she's okay. Is, for those who don't know what scubettas is, those are guns, right? Yes, correct. Right. So uh, this cop gets out backwards. Now, I'm really looking at this son of a bitch. And he turns around, he flicks his cigarette at me, and he charges me. Now, I still don't recognize him as a cop. He's a peacock. Right. And he leaps and he hits the front of this fucking Jeep and bounces, man. I said, that's it, brother. So I go through the front of the diner when the people come out because I figured <laughs> if they're going to shoot me, maybe they, they got a little kindness right. for the people who out of the diner. I get out of there and I'm gone, man. I hide the fucking Jeep. I call my mother up. She's already got fucking... And just to... Hold on a second, Pete. To set this in, in the right motion, you were not just imagining this shit. People wanted to hit you, other families, oh, all oh. kinds of shit, right? Let's so... Step back. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. Step back so because I, these people don't understand the game, right? So I, if you're worried about this, it's not your head or, or being on drugs. This is really like fucking a, a real deal, a real threat oh, yeah. in your life, right? Oh, yeah. What, so, and he didn't that, identify himself as a cop, so you thought... He identified as shitty. Flick that cigarette at me like right, a, a header. A header, right. So I found out that they went to Archwise Collision Shop to raid it, right? Mm-hmm. But, but they... Guys there just spit all over the place. So they were chasing them. And who did they happen to see? Me. And I don't know nothing about this fucking chase. <laughs> they chased him with helicopters and shit. I ain't paying. Who is this? Who is this? Uh, they were chasing uh, Joey, Anthony, uh, Henry. Whoever else was at the body shop that day. <laughs> <laughs> and they thought you were with them, right? Yeah, and they see me and they see, oh, let's get Petey. Motherfucker. <laughs> So next year I hear, next year I hear about this cop is that, you know, he's, I, he's telling people that I put a hit on him. Now, you know, Rock, I mean. Yeah, you're not that guy. It's not written, it's not only that. We don't do that. We don't hurt officers. Not cops. We, no, no, no. Too much attention. No, you know, no, you know right? what I mean? And, just, just, and clear one other thing up. A lot of people think, like, I'm connected some way. I never, I was never in the game. I was, I always knew people in the game. But I, 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 I you know. Because I keep getting this question, right? Like, like you did with Joey, I was on the I was on the outside, but I had cops in my family and bad guys in my family, so I knew. And I just I lived by the same code. You guys don't snitch. You do something, you you wear it, right? So I just want to set up that that I'm I'm on the outside looking in, but when they don't understand it, I just explain it to them. Okay. Okay, I understand that, y'all. Right. So now, now, he knows, and and the, and the worst part is, he's married to a wise guy's niece. Now he knows that we don't do that shit. So anyhow, Roy got word of it. You know what I mean? Roy had somebody upstairs, you know, in the U.S. Attorney's, and they called Roy and they told Roy, he said, "Listen, get PD out of town because this cop's gonna kill him and put a gun on right. him." Right. And the so cop Roy, was dirty, right? Well, here we are. Here, here, here is a. a an official high up above, go on Roy to tell him that this cop's gonna whack me and put a gun on me. Right, and that right. was 
Roy's uncle, who was a, a DA, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, yes, definitely. So Roy tells you, I got to leave. And for my leave, I ain't running from that cop. You know, young, I'm young, I'm stupid. So wait a minute, hold on. Again, I want to establish this. Roy, who everybody thinks is this big, maniacal, killer, crazy dude, wants to, no. he wants to protect you and wants right. to send you to Florida, right? Yes, he, he just wanted me out, yes. And what did he tell your wife? That's what he did. He went He went to my, I just had a brand new little son, you know? So right. he goes to my wife, he says, listen, I'll give you whatever you need, but you got to get PD out of Dodge. And All that's right? what he told you your wife, because he was trying to protect you. Right, he tried, he used her to get to me, because he knew I was going to keep saying, no, I ain't running from that fucking cop. <laughs> right. But, you know, but you love your wife and son. Well, I guess he loved me too, because. Of course he did. He wanted me to go. Listen. Anyhow, out of Dodge. That's a, uh, sorry to get in that place, but that's what people need to understand. That Roy was conflicted in this world uh, like you were, like everybody gets in that world. Correct, correct. But I know one thing about Roy. The original seven guys that were with him, he loved us all. And who was that? Well, I'd have to say that was me, Joey, yeah. Henry. Henry uh, Freddie? Uh, no. No, no, no. He, the original. The original right. was Henry, Joey, me, uh, Paulie. Um, Paul who? Paulie Dudal. Paulie who? Paul, Paul Dudal. Dudal, okay. Not the only guy I share, Paulie, because he, uh, he did some time and he wasn't around a lot, just like me. Right. That was one, that was one tough son of a bitch, boy. Paulie. Where we are, Paulie? Paulie Pitt, though. <laughs> hey, and, and who and else? He, that's five. That's who five. Else? Roy, six. And, and old man Joe, Dracula. That made seven. But what about Chrissy? He's not in there? Hey, he's there, but who the fuck yeah. <laughs> Nobody like I got it. All right. Cool. That was your original cool. Freddie, Richie, uh, uh, Big oh. Henry, uh, Guido, all oh, rats. Arena. Oh, oh, yeah, they were shit, right. Listen, when I came home, right, I seen, I seen Vito, I said, hmm, I don't like this guy. You know, you, know, you come home, you get this extra sense about certain things, right? And so we cleared up, it's not because he was gay, right? I don't know if he was gay, and I wasn't getting close to him. But you, no, but your extra sense wasn't no, that. No, 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 it wasn't no. that. I, know, I didn't find that out till later. I right, just, but, just had a bad feeling about the guy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we go to dinner. I would right. never see this guy alone and shit like that. You know what I mean? And uh, it got to the point where I said to somebody else, I said, mm, I think we should just whack this motherfucker. I'm telling you, that's how bad. <laughs> so the guy agreed with me. Mm -hmm. but he made a mistake. He went and asked Roy. Right. Roy, Roy said, no. You know, because this guy made his bones. He shot right. his fucking foot. He shot his foot right in the back. You know what I mean? Nah, he yeah, wasn't yeah. even a shot his I said, that's that. So Roy said to me, what's your problem? I said, I won't have a problem. Just don't send me to do nothing with him because only one of us is coming back. He said, I said, boy, I just got this bad feel. So, so this how I not, in trial, when we were on trial, when, when he asked him about me, he said, I don't know. Petey never liked me. He would never shake my head and kiss me out of the cheek like the other boys. And I looked at him and I said, imagine that. <laughs> now, didn't you say this guy had a like a fake name the whole time? He was snitching under a fake name? So he could he tell the feds just, if he got caught? Right. He was calling the right. guy, telling him shit here and there, using his name. So when the time came, when he did get arrested, he says, I was so-and-so, and I was right. giving you this information. You know? Anyway. Right. So. Anyway, and, you know, back to John. I, let me tell you something about, the thing about John Quinn. Yeah. I worked with this guy for a long time. I right. knew he was back and he was... Right. Roy found out and he went to this skipper in Manhattan that John did a lot of work for, right? Mm -hmm. And the skipper told him, he says, listen, I make a hundred grand with this guy a year. I'm going to kill him for him. So I looked at Roy and Roy shook his head. It wasn't a week later that that same skipper called Roy up. He says, you got to do me a favor. I got a problem. He said, yeah, what's that? He said, Quinn's going to testify tomorrow. I said, oh, really? 
And so, so be it. So, uh, you know, whatever happened to him, happened to him. Right, but, but let's let's stop here because a woman was involved in a killing, and you talked to me about this, and 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 women in killings was not cool. But Quinn brought her to meetings he shouldn't have brought her to, right? But she, he thought she, he thought he'd be safe. I had this guy Danny Grillo tell me one day. I went to his house, right, and my girl dropped me off. She pulled away. The first thing right out of his mouth was, "What do you think? Cause she drops you off, are you gonna kill you? All I'm gonna do is kill her too." I said. What the fuck is your problem, Danny? But that's another story. Danny is right. dead. But, but the women thing was usually off limits, but she had been brought to a couple of meetings. They worried, right? Sure. You know, it's not right. I mean, but uh, uh, among the, the crew, a lot of people protested about the woman, right? Sure. Yes. I mean, even no. though Roy was a skipper, they protested doing that, right? Yeah, they no, did it. No. Whoever did it, did it anyway, but they protested. They probably had no choice. Right, but I'm just saying that you told me that nobody wanted to do this thing. Uh, no, none of that. Listen, I was with those guys for a long time, and right. I know in my heart that they would never hurt a woman. You know, unfortunately, what do you want to call it? Collateral damage, whatever the fuck right. you want to call it. You know, once John walked into that place and didn't walk out, right. and it was yeah, a shame. She, she was a good kid, Sherry Gold. I really liked her. Yeah. You, know. you told me, and you told me it was an upsetting thing, and you weren't there, but you told me what, what no, went down. Though. Yeah, we know uh, why. We're going to get there. So <laughs> so let's keep talking about that. After that happened, you were down in Shelby, right? When they hit you with the arson? Right. No, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I was in Shelby. Yeah. But uh, this had happened when I was home. Right. Right. They just came to Shelby to get me. But that's another interesting story because that saved my ass too. Right, because you were in tra transit, right, when it happened? Yeah. And when it came time for the trial, all during my trial with, you know, with Big Paul and stuff, they kept saying I was here, there, pictures of me, do that, do that. <laughs> I'm sitting there saying, wait a minute, hold on, sit me right here. I'm thinking about this. What the fuck are they talking about? I was in federal prison. So I told my lawyer, Joe Winograd, he says to me, he says, are you sure? I said, I just gave you 160 grand. You don't think I'm sure where the fuck I was in federal prison? <laughs> just, he says, we're not going to say nothing. I said, okay. He waits for the end of the trial, right? And before the end of the, before they, they got to make some, summarize for the jury, right? Mm -hmm. You know, jury's out now. It's just me because, uh, of course, I wasn't out on bail. So I was right. there. And, uh, Tells the judge, he says, Your Honor, we got a problem. Judge says, What problem do we got, Mr. Winograd? He says, My client couldn't have been in all these places with these pictures of these special agents. He, you know, he was part of <laughs> yeah. special agents that testified against him. He says, And why is that? Because he was in federal prison. Says, <laughs> so, so the prosecutor's named Walter Mack. Oh, hold on, stop. Spoiler alert for all of you people who thought that B was convicted. Nobody told the rest of the story of Murder Machine. He couldn't have done it. He was in prison. Federal prison. Way far away in Memphis. Yeah. He had, he had to shoot a gun like they did with uh, Angelina Jolie in that stupid movie with that uh, Irish kid. It, not happening. In the meantime, so the judge says to the prosecutor, you have till tomorrow to prove to me that Mr. LaFroche was not in federal prison. His name was Walter Mack. Oh, Walter so, Mack. Yeah, that's the DA that took you guys down the first time, right? And so he says, no problem, Your Honor. Next day comes, right? Before they bring the jury in, just says, well, I'll never forget this word. I swear to God to this day. He says, Your Honor, <laughs> we made an erroneous mistake. Holy I said, shit. I said, what the fuck does erroneous mean? I asked my wife. <laughs> dead. So now... They got to figure out what they're going to tell the jury. All right. So me, I want to tell the jury the truth, you know. Hey, I was in federal mm. prison. But Judge you can't. Said, Judge says, no, Mr. LaFosse, we don't want to take your image. I said, you're right. You got guys up I there. I think you accused of murder. You got to say, you got guys up there saying that we chopping bodies up when we're eating hot dogs and pizza. You don't want to take your <laughs> image. He says, he says, I got this. I says, yeah, I guess so. So they finally come up with the thing saying, I was out, out, of, out of the country. 
The so judge. The yeah. So the, the judge the lied to the jury. Not me. Prosecutor. The judge. Me. The judge lied to the jury. Sure. First time I wanted to hear the truth of my whole life, and they wouldn't tell it. <laughs> so, I, and by so the way, let's on that note. I, I need to make another comment for everybody says the volume is not good sometimes with Pete. He always had tried to avoid being heard or videotaped. This is hard for him. Because his whole life he spent not being videotaped or being heard. This is hard for my buddy. So, uh, so now the jury comes in. So they agree on telling the jury, I was out of the country. I'm shaking my head, you know. Judge knew what he was doing, Rock. Right? Anyhow, yeah. my wife is. I get convicted of certain, certain things, right? So you, they poll the jury. My lawyer polls the jury to find out, you know, why they came up with this decision. So they told him, you know, even though he was out of the country, he's been around these guys forever. How do we know he wasn't slipping back and forth? And that's how they got me. Wow. So other, other things that happened during the trial, I'll right. make you laugh. That All right. Well, that's what I was going to talk about. Didn't a witness point to somebody in it, and you thought it was you, and it was somebody else? Well, this guy, John Bennett. Mm -hmm. John Bennett. He was a main, yeah, he was a main witness. Right. For the prosecutor, okay? He was, he was John Quinn's cousin. Okay, and he was supposed to be there. Yeah, so the bottom line is, he said that I offered him $10,000 to lure John Quinn into this place, right? By name. By name. But not by eyesight. He left. So he says, uh, um, what do you say? He says, uh, yeah, I was pretty insistent on getting in there, right? Right. And, you know, and then, so when it came time, he's on the witness stand. Prosecutors asked him a few questions. He says, and he said, Mr. Bennett, who offered you this money to set your cousin up? Wait, hold on. Who were you sitting next to? Oh, uh, Henry. Henry Borelli. Henry, but and uh, anyway. so, <laughs> so he says he's asking a question, and he offers you this money to set his co your cousin up to to kill him, right? He says yes. He says, and uh, is he in his courtroom today? He says yes. Let me stop you for a minute here. They said I had a beard at the time, so when I was in the holding cell, I grew right. a beard. I said, yeah, my, wife, yeah. my wife says, "What are you fucking nuts?" I said, "Listen, man." I don't know this guy. I never met this guy. <laughs> Fuck this guy. He should still. I said, so now he's, the prosecutor says to him, he says, is he in the courtroom today? And he says, oh, yes, he's here. I'm saying, son of a bitch. Yeah. Didn't so your heart go into your ass at this point? Yeah, yeah, it came out. My ass was back to the floor. <laughs> so he says, can you point them out? And sure as shit, he starts to move his head. That guy is that motherfucker. Goes, That's him right there. I start to stand up, right? I'm about halfway up and I see this. She's not you. You try to fucking trick me. That guy next to you is Pete LaFrosha. I look at Henry. <laughs> what the fuck? Now, Henry is a six foot tall. Good looking like, guy. Yeah, but totally like taller, different look anyway, than you all together. The Machiavelli guy. Right. You know, and you're right. you're not six foot, right? Oh, shit. I'm up here for five eight. Right. So. Just, I want to establish for people who don't know who Henry is, right? Yeah. So, for a second, he had me going there with that thing. I was I was up at the seat, say. Right. I, I, I'm stuttering now. And he, and he starts screaming, you're not Pete LaFrosha. I said, 